The number system that we use is called the Arabic numeral system, or sometimes the Hindu Arabic numeral system. It's a base 10 system, which means that we use 10 symbols, 0 to 9, to represent all numbers. But other number systems do exist, and they're more common than you might think. Let's first define exactly what we mean when we say a base. In mathematics, a base is what decides how many symbols we use before resetting to zero and going up a digit. So we use base 10 with zero to nine, and all numbers above nine are represented with multiplied powers of 10. Take 427. That's 10 to the power of zero times seven, plus 10 to the power of one times two, plus 10 to the power of 2 times 4. We can easily find other number systems though. Let's have a look at the computer, phone, tablet, laptop, or whatever you're watching this on right now. That counts in binary, which is base 2. 42, for example, in binary is 101010, which may seem a little bit random, but it does make sense when you think about it. Of course, base 2 isn't as useful for us humans because large numbers become incredibly arduous to write very quickly. Bases that are too small lead to numbers ballooning out of control too quickly and making them stupidly hard to actually use. On the other hand, two big bases are bad too because you'd have to memorize a lot of symbols to use them. One other thing that can make bases bad is lack of factors. Base 7 or 13 would be good if they were more easily divisible. Try to divide a base 7 number by anything save 7 and you will be in for a very bad time. Theoretically though, you could make literally any number a base. There are infinite bases. Heck, why not make base 18 quintillion, 446 quadrillion, 744 trillion, 73 billion, 709 million, 551,616, and make each unique symbol on a 64 by 64 grid using base 2? Stepping away from regular bases for a moment, why not make a system where only primes get unique symbols and all other numbers are represented as their prime factors? So 24 in this system could be written as 2, 2, 2, 3, which while fun is not super convenient for everyday human use. One other variation we can make to the standard base formula is called a bijective system. This is where we start counting from 1 instead of 0 and then make unique symbols for each new digit we go up to signify what we're actually talking about. This is what Japanese uses, and while it's a little clunky, it's still nice and effective. What would base 1 look like? Well, the only digit that we would get would be 0, so we could only write long strings of zeros. But if we were instead to make it a bijective system, we could write strings of 1s. This way, each 1 would represent 1 to the power of something, which is always equal to 1. So congratulations, you've just invented a slightly worse version of tally marks. Would it be possible to use a non-integral number as a base? Well, practically no. You can't really have half a symbol, can you? But from a purely mathematical standpoint, the answer is actually yes. Take base 1.5, for instance. 1 in base 1.5 is still 1, of course, but 1, 0 is 1.5, and 1, 0, 0, what we would call 100, is 2.25. Decimals work in all base systems as well. 1.1 in base 1.5 is equivalent to 1.66 recurring in base 10. If we can use 1.5 as a base, could we even use an irrational number? Well, yes, again, though in base pi, tau, and e, almost all integers become irrational. Phi, though, has an interesting property in that you actually can write any natural number with a finite amount of digits in base phi. This works because of a funny property of phi, which is that phi to the power of 2 is equal to phi plus 1, and the square root of phi is equal to phi minus 1. It's not good, no, not even close, 
but it is very impressive for an irrational number. Good job, Phi. What about negative bases? Surely that can't work. Well, actually, it totally does again, and it's quite strange. With base negative 2, for example, the first digit is negative 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. Then negative 2 to the power of 1, which is, of course, negative 2. Then negative 2 to the power of 2, which is positive 4. Then negative 8, positive 16, negative 32, positive 64, and so on. It's the same as base 2, but with every second number flipped. Very strange. Not all negative, like we might expect. If we can do positive or negative bases, could we even do an imaginary base? Numbers in base i and negative i flip-flop between all four states of being. Each digit goes through being some multiple of i, negative 1, negative i, or 1, cycling round and round. What about complex numbers? They work as well. Try base 2 plus 2i to get digits that represent 1, 2 plus 2i, 8i, negative 16 plus 16i, and on and on it goes. Despite how honestly terrible these bases are, there is one that is worse. Nullary, or base 0, revolves around powers of 0. Let's try to write something in nullary. So we have zero symbols, and so we can't write anything. We're off to a great start. But if we cheat a bit and give ourselves a symbol, like we did with negative and imaginary bases, we could write a one. So let's put that here in the first place. Well, this represents zero to the power of zero, which is, uh, well, that's the problem, isn't it? There are a few possibilities as to what zero to the power of zero might be, and saying that any of them are true is going to make someone very angry. But even if we do assume that it is the most useful option for counting and say that it's one, we can't write anything greater than that, since any higher digits are just equal to zero to the power of something, which is of course zero. Maybe decimals still work there. If we put a 1 here, that's equal to 1 times 0 to the power of negative 1, which is actually the same as 1 over 0, which means that we are dividing by 0 here. So, in short, perhaps it would be a good idea to just stick with base 10 for the time being.